Welcome everyone, it's Amy and Doug from Plants for Human Health Institute, and we are really excited to share our new bucket garden with you. Doug, tell us a little bit more about this bucket garden. Yeah, I love this. This is a movable, movable cart. This one is made to hold eight five gallon buckets with holes drilled for drainage, and it, it's just perfect. Um, I was at a school recently, and they had no real space for beds like what we have here, wood beds with strawberries or concrete block beds that um, we grow a lot of things in. But they had a great concrete courtyard that we could put a bucket garden or more, several actually, and it was perfect for that. Yeah, I think they're great for, for courtyards. They're also great for a classroom. Like if you want one close to your classroom, maybe the garden isn't, or maybe you don't have a garden and you want a garden right outside your door, this is perfect. It's enough space and you could even build a third tier if you wanted enough space for everybody to have some planting room. It's also ADA accessible. But Doug, I know you know me well, but what do you think is the number one reason I really like this? Well, show? we think alike on this one. <laughs> it has a, there's a very minimal time investment to build one of these and even better it's not very expensive it, you know you're going to need a couple thousand dollars or so to do a uh, a true outdoor garden and this bucket garden under two hundred dollars that's great and also the maintenance investment is going to be less than a raised bed as well absolutely um, it's yeah. going to be easier to control your weeds it's just going to be a little bit less time and maintenance investment overall all right well let's see how we go about planting this all right I see that we have all white buckets here, and I have this blue one. Is right. there a reason that we have all white ones here? Yeah, the reason is we chose white because it reflects the light, and when it does that, it also keeps the soil cooler. Uh, blue will be a little bit warmer. If you had a black bucket, it'd be even warmer. So white is our best choice for keeping soil a little bit cooler. And so that also means it's not going to dry out as quickly too, correct? True. All right. And here's another thing about our buckets is we've drilled holes in the bottom. Uh, four holes, three-eighths inch. Is, we just chose that. Uh, and what's important though is if you can see hopefully how far apart they are. They're near the edge because we don't want the water draining onto this runner that supports the bucket. I also see that they say food grade. And I I think that's important too. I think the main thing about that is you don't really want to recycle. This is not the place to recycle some, some old laundry detergent buckets or anything that might have had chemicals. Because right. this is going to be food you're going to be growing to eat. So I think it's important that we maintain that safety. All right, let's, um, what well, else? Amy, how much soil are we going to need to put in? Or how, how do we... Well, gosh, no. Doug, I'm used to just measuring the length and width, but this, these are round. These are going to be a little bit different. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to first measure my diameter. So my diameter is about 12. I know the radius is half of that, so that's 6. And the height is about 14. So now I can use my formula, pi r squared times the height, in order to figure out the volume. These are going to be approximately one cubic foot. Okay, right. great, great. So get, we should be ready to go. Let's get planting. All right, so we have our buckets filled, and Doug, tell us about the soil we're using today. Okay, so we have an organic soil. Uh, we recommend that you uh, use organic fertilizer so that soil comes with it already, ready to roll. And, um, and I think bag soil is probably the way to go this way. Normally it's a little more expensive, but you're not going to need that much. So just keep searching till you can find some. It's a little bit hard to find, but look for the organic soil. Right. So Amy, these have soil in them with, like we said, with the fertilizer already. Here's how to plant. One example of how to plant. We're going to take this red lettuce out. It's got some good roots. And this planting method works really well for uh, young students. So if you take your trowel, down is one, count with them, two is back, three is placing it in, and four, we just kind of push the soil around. Probably hard for you to see that right there. The red doesn't show up really get, great against the brown, but it's an easy method. Yeah. And another thing about this, or if you remember back when we were calculating the soil, it was about 12 inches across. And this is a little bit of a strange concept, but a square foot, you can still have a square foot in a round space. 
So your spacing for these bucket gardens are going to be just the same as it would in a square foot garden. So right. Each of these is one square foot. And another thing I love about that, let's say I'm planting lettuce. Lettuce is four plants per square foot. That's 32 plants in this. That can be one for every student in my class, yeah, maybe great? a few yeah. extras. Yeah, they grow their own. Okay, right. good. Well, let's finish up the planting. Well, as you can see, our bucket garden is fully planted. We have a variety of lettuces and herbs. And one of the great things about this is I love mint. I love to make some simple syrup with it, use it in cooking. And it just makes Smells me happy. Good. But I never plant it in my garden because it's so invasive. It just wants to take over. But here, this little booger will be self-contained right here and it won't go anywhere. So I can have as much mint as I want. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay. Um, so I guess it's time to go ahead we, and water everything. Yeah, the last activity is to water. <clears throat> Make sure so many different ways to do that. I've just got a watering can here and we'll get this basil watered. Remember there are holes in the bottom uh, for drainage, but right now all I care about is getting enough water to the bottom of the root ball there. So I think we're about there. It looks good. All and remember, right. during the heat of the summer, which we're getting ready to go into that season, they are going to dry out faster than they would any other time of year. But it's a, it's a quick watering situation. It is, yeah. And now I guess the last thing is just where do I put it? Is there a particular place that I should place my bucket garden? Because I love that it's movable. Right. So <clears throat> the main thing is for light, we want at least six hours. Eight would be even better of continuous sunlight. Okay. There is one other thing regarding weather though that's really great about this is, and if we have it out on a courtyard and we've planted early for some things that need warm weather, we can roll it under possibly an awning or right up next to the building. So it stays and a little more protected. protected and that's, that would be a microclimate. That's great, yeah. okay. Well, I guess now all we have to do is wait and enjoy some salad and some herbs. Yeah, I look forward to watching it grow. All right.